Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to discuss Mythic Plus with you and I wanted to talk to you about the differences between playing in a pre-made and playing in a pug. You know, what are you missing if you're playing in a, in a pug? What do, you, what do you have that you may not appreciate if you're playing in a pre-made? What are the kind of the pros and cons of both? Because it's not all, you know, uh, rainbows and puppy dogs uh when it comes to pre-mades there are some things there are that you have to consider when you do play in a full pre-made uh and i think a lot of people are shooting for that a lot of people want to be in a pre-made a lot of people either exclusively pug and they're desperately trying to get something together so that they can you know finally start pushing properly or some people might even just play with guildies and you do your weekly 15s but you're playing with guildies and you're having a good time and it's way more relaxed and i wanted to talk about the differences uh in these things you get to see those guys who are pushing above 3k io now and you think oh man if i had a team like that i would be able to you know i would be able to pop off i would be so good if i was in that environment and i wanted to discuss these kinds of things because i personally have been in a whole range of different uh, settings when it comes to mythic plus i mean i've i pugged my way on two off meta specs so i'm i'm currently like the rank two feral rank three survival hunter uh for mythic plus i've got 2.2k io on both those characters so i've played i've pugged off meta but i've also i'm also a 2k io balanced druid so i've also pugged playing an actual meta spec and then i play and i play a windwalker monk as well so i i've i've noticed the difference when i play these specs and then i've also played with some really really good players i played with people and i'm not going to list them all uh much to their dismay but people like fam i mean even even just uh yesterday i was playing with j.b fam shella dan war i played with you know andy now nagur like rads like all kinds of just awesome people and really 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 good players and i've noticed the difference in these environments with playing with people like the uh you know like these guys and gals compared to playing in pugs and what what to look out for so without further ado i thought i'd kind of just give some of my experiences and and, and kind of discuss what it's been like for me and maybe uh you guys might i guess you know see something in that so when we talk about pre-made over pugging, I think there are two main types of pre-made gameplay, right? There's the top end players who are really, really good and they're pushing IO and they're just really, really good players, right? And then there's the guild group, right? And the guild group I'm gonna call just kind of the getting the weekly 15s, not necessarily bad players, not necessarily great players, just people who you may, you know, you may finish your raid night on a Monday or whatever, and you jump into a couple dungeons with these people, and you do your weekly 15s, right? And you may be in there for 30 minutes, you may be in there for an hour or an hour and a half, but you know you're going to get it done, and you're just playing with these people just to get your weekly key, right? And I think those are like the two types of pre-made group. You don't have to be pushing high IO just to kind of be in this pre-made environment. And I think the main advantage of this kind of guild group style pre-made is it rem completely removes the stress and the anxiety and the friction from mythic plus and i think for a lot of people and i will kind of circle back to this later that is a massive massive relief just to know that you're going to be able to jump into this dungeon with people that you can trust well, maybe you can't trust them because, you know, you've just been raiding with them and Billy's still standing in that fire mechanic for the 50th wipe in a row and Jenny can't hit her interrupt, but that's okay. At least you know they're not going to leave the key. And I think that is the massive relief from playing in this style of pre-made is that, you know, even if it's going to take you an hour and a half, you're going to finish this key and there's not going to be a screaming match. There's not going to be arguments. You're just going to have some fun. Oh, we accidentally pulled and wiped. Oh, well, big whoop. Get it back into it and just finish it off. And... And I think, I think that just removes a lot of stress for people. And that is a massive relief when you're playing Mythic, you know, when you're doing Mythic Plus, to just have that level of anxiety and, and, and stress just kind of removed from, from the scene. But I will circle back to this later and I'll kind of put in, a pin in that for now. But I wanted to then discuss what it's like playing with some of these top end players and playing with them in a pre-made and what that feels like. So... For me, I've played, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, I played with a lot of, you know, really good players. Haven't had a long-term pre-made. There was a, a time when me, uh, Cryptex, and Shella were playing together for a little bit, and uh, both really, really good players, and really cool guys. And we used to have, uh, you know, have a, have a good time, having beers on a Friday and chilling out and doing some keys and 
and uh, they would get wacky and wonderful and that was a good time but um what you find when you play with in a pre-made like this is the massive level of of coordination that you have in these keys and that is the biggest advantage is just the coordination right most players in this scene they'll be tracking cooldowns. So you'll have your tank tracking your DPS cooldowns. You'll have your, your DPS tra uh, tracking your tank cooldowns. I myself, for example, when I play, I was playing with uh, with Femme yesterday and, uh, and, and and some other guys, and we and, and I was tracking uh, when uh, Femme was gonna, was potentially gonna be kiting, when his, when his demon spikes was running out, when his meta was running out, when he was gonna be looking to potentially kite, so I could look to get the binding shot out, look to get the slow trap out. And you're looking at these kinds of things and trying to kind of um, determine what your what your group might be doing next to see how you can help them. And I think that kind of takes me to my next point of you, you kind of got the better the better ingredients, better pizza when it comes to when it comes to playing in these pre-made environments. People just know their specs really really well, and you find that people are. I don't want to say like better players because they're in a better environment, right? But the, the, you're playing with people who just really know their spec, they really know the dungeons, and they really know how to maximize their utility and their and their damage to help the group. We've seen some controversy in the community recently um, with you know balanced druids not convoking on prides and things like that, and. When you get into groups with these types of players, I mean, you look at somebody like Wildy, right? And Wildy is a great, great mage. I, I love that man, mostly for the fact that he combusts prides, right? Like he knows that that is the most effective, efficient way to kill this pride is for him to use his cooldowns on this because they're so short and because they do so much damage that it's just really good for him to be able to do that and he helps the whole team and he tells you know and you play with wadi and it'd be like oh, all right i'll pop on this pride you guys take a break i mean he doesn't sound like that but you get the point and uh and so he's really really good to play with people like that i mean i played with mages in the past who don't use their combust for prides and they kind of hoard them so that they can go big on the pack afterwards and that overall looks great but the actual like your healers just had to pop their spirit link and had to pop you know additional cooldowns that they could have saved for later on in the dungeon so then two minutes down the line your tank dies and it's because you had to pop a bunch of shit during that pride that could have just been handled if your mage had used that combust and things like this and you have this knock-on effect in the dungeon and then you have people dying and then you have the key depleting and you have people going oh well it was this guy because he didn't do enough damage and it's like well no it happened earlier because we had to commit so much to this pride or to this pack because somebody didn't use their cooldowns effectively for the good of the group. And I think that when you get to this, uh, you know, to this pre-made environment, this higher end environment, people uh, understand this and uh, and they're willing to kind of help the group and not just try and pad overall. You don't really have that many overall damage kind of uh, uh, sycophants really when you get to the to the higher end, but um. But going into this coordination then extends into having Discord. And I think a lot of pug groups are willing to jump on Discord, but normally when you play with a pre-made group, everyone's willing to jump on Discord and, uh, you know, kind of just coordinate cooldowns, coordinate pulls, discuss routes, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, that just really, really helps. It's way easier if you can just ask, hey, Billy, have you got something for this next pack? Yep, cool, okay. Boom, rather than kind of trying to track your your other players' cooldowns, trying to guess, oh, I think the last time they used that cooldown was here, you can just ask, and it's just a lot a lot more effective, a lot more efficient. Um, a really cool thing that I've noticed as well, and, and actually I have a really good memory of this, was when I played uh, with Andy in a 26 mother load in BFA, like season three or something. It was a 26 mother load, it was like me, Andy, I think Faithy was playing. I can't even I can't even remember. Um, I think Mode Mode was there as well. We had like some ridiculously scuffed comp then. And we, and we timed this 26 mother load. And I remember there was a point where we got we, we were doing the uh, the jockeys uh, in the in the beginning, you know, in that beginning ring of, of mother load. And we stopped for like 10 or 15 seconds and just waited. And we were kind of like we pull that pack mm, no nah, well i think we'll grab that mob and we'll grab that mob all right can uh can you see can one of you cc this somebody else cc and we're just like afking for like 20 seconds in this dungeon 
and we i think we did it like tw twice we did it like two or three times where we just would stop for like 10 plus seconds at a time and just hard afk and uh and and just discuss what we wanted to do and then execute it and we still had enough time to time this dungeon and i think the cool thing about being in a coordinated pre-made is just taking that time to chill for a moment and say hey what is our plan and it just feels like you have so much more time to discuss these things when you are in a pre-made compared to being in a pug where it can sometimes feel very go 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 you know go but it's not very efficient and you're not executing things well and somebody messes up their their cc or whatever and then you know the the group can go poorly and you can wipe or you still complete it and you still kill the pack off but it wasn't very efficient and you've lost some time for it right or you've committed cooldowns to it that you didn't necessarily want to and so i think things like that being able to pause for a moment is really cool in a pre bed and that's something that i've noticed I i've also noticed things like so i mean i've got another good story of one time when i played with mode mode and i was the it was like probably the second or third time i played with him and we were in a i can't remember what dungeon it was it may have been like a king's rest or something like that and he like we were like midway through the key and he was like sigh call your wall when you're using it and there's something to that effect and he kind of like gave me a telling off he gave me a little gave me a little spanking and he was like sigh call your call your cooldown because i was using my defensives but I wasn't pre-warning him, so then we would double commit defensives that we didn't need to, and he could have saved it, used the global to continue DPSing, or he could have saved that that um, defensive to somebody else, right? And from that day on, now whenever I'm in a group, I call my defensives. I mean, I've been a little bit more lax recently, but like normally for, for like for like the rest of BFA, that was like season three or something. Like for the rest of BFA, I was just calling all my cooldowns. And I still do. I call I call my bark skin and everything. Because that kind of like drilled it into me. You know? And I think I think things like that are really cool when you play when you play with some of these players is is um you don't want to screw up. And I think that encourages you to kind of play better, which is which is really cool. Um I think that's pretty much most of, of stuff really. I mean the the other thing as well, like I was gonna mention is if if you go into some of these keys as well. The big thing with with a pre-made is trust, right? And you go into, say, like a Spires of Ascension, right? And you've got your Shaman, your Resto Healer, right? And you know, every time you go into a Spires of Ascension, that player is always going to hit their Interrupt on the Goliath. So now you don't have to worry about it. You know, oh yeah, our Shami's gonna gonna handle the Goliath, and then you guys can just deal with the other, the other Interrupts. And you kind of build in these these like uh common common plays that you just go into this dungeon you know oh this is my job this is the mob that i'm going to cc at this point this is the mob that i'm going to interrupt and this is the thing that i handle oh this is when i go and uh grab the um uh, you know the bat in in halls of atonement this is when i go grab it for the pride and that kind of thing so you kind of build up these just expected plays and you can practice these roots a lot more which is really really good when you're playing in a pre-made um, is that you just have that consistency you may have three halls of atonement and you can just run them back to back to back and kind of practice these keys uh, which is just a massive advantage when you're pushing in a pre-made now a couple issues that i guess pre-mades have are things like i don't want to say no loyalty because some pre-mades have really really solid loyalty but because you're playing with people that are willing to form a pre-made they're probably willing to play the best specs and you know they're willing to uh yeah i don't know just kind of they're, they're willing to play the better specs they're willing to uh to put in the time and the effort to form a pre-made to show up on time to play at a given time and so the whole like no loyalty is if they can find someone better to play they potentially will so you might be pushing with them for a while and then they might find oh i can get i'm i can get poached by this other group and go play with them because a spot's just opened up with them for a balanced druid or something or i can stick with these guys and then you know maybe 
Billy comes along, and now Billy wants to play, and you go, huh, we've pushed enough IO that now Billy wants to play with us? Okay, we could do that. And then suddenly, Jenny's out of the group now, right? And I, I feel like that can happen sometimes. It's probably not as big a deal, but I feel like it's definitely something that can happen. Uh, whereas that's way less likely to happen in something, say, like a, a guild group. Or if you're pugging, I mean, there's no loyalty anyway. But it's not a disadvantage to have no loyalty in a pre-made. It just is a thing that's kind of... Uh, kind of expected so it's it's not not too bad um another thing is that i think in pre-mades normally people don't really like expect failure but they normally handle it well when it happens right like normally if people make mistakes and you deplete the key and whatever normally people like they're kind of like they don't really expect it to happen but then when it does they're normally like hey don't worry about it you know what happened what can we do better and that kind of thing um, but I think normally you're playing at a standard where people expect you to, to, to you know, kind of have things down and to, to kind of nail, um, nail the mechanics and whatever and, and whatever is expected of you. So when it comes to pugging keys, then there are actually quite a few advantages that you may not, uh, you know, kind of think about or maybe not consider. The main one being that you can more efficiently target your radar IO increase, right? Like you can more, uh, more specifically I'll get keys. Say you only need your last 15 key that you need for your achievement is a Halls of Atonement, right? Then you can just go on and you can specifically find a group that ha already has that key. Whereas if you're in a pre-made, you have to hope that you roll that key at some point that week. And, you know, kind of extending into that, sometimes with a pre-made, it could be a really good push week, but you end up with your group having five Sanguine Depths or something, right? And you just have a real shitty time and you got to kind of drop these keys down and re, re uh, you know, um, rebuild them. Or you've got to try and just get your way through some of these Sanguines or whatever and commit the time to doing these keys that are probably going to deplete or whatever. And so it's a lot more difficult to find the specific keys that you may need. And you can also just hit a, hit a wall and just be stuck with a bunch of shitty keys when you're in a pre-made. Another thing when it comes to pugging is that say you've got um, a group uh, that doesn't have a Venthyr, right? You've got your pre-made, none of you are Venthyr, and now you've got a Halls or a Sanguine. Well, now you're kind of like, ah, shit, we're going to be inefficient. And eventually you're going to hit a wall where you kind of need a Venthyr, right? Whereas when you're playing with pugs, you can specifically target a Venthyr, and you're never really worried about, oh, man, we're not going to have a Venthyr for this key. Oh, we've got a really good key, but we don't have the right setup. You can specifically build the right setup for each key. To say as well, you're pugging and you're doing Necrotic Wake. Ooh, I want a rogue for Necrotic Wake because, I mean, it's changed slightly now. Blizzard kind of fixed it a bit. But, uh, you know, previously you would take a rogue with the uh, crit legendary and then they would grab the items and then they would just go and pew pew everything and they would, you know, just just blow through everything with spears and orbs and everything, right? And, you, you know, you could go into the gauntlet and you could pull everything and just blitz it down. But in a, in, in a pre-made, you might not have a rogue. So now you've got to go and do Necrotic Wake inefficiently. You probably could have two-chested it, but now you've one-chested it. Or, oh, you were close to timing it. If you'd had a rogue, you probably would have timed it, but now you haven't. Whereas in a pug, you can just specifically target the exact comp that you want for that dungeon, which is a really, really big advantage. So there are actually quite a few adventures to pugs here. As well, you're not on anyone else's time limit. Say you want to play at 3 a.m., you can. Say you want to play at 2 in the afternoon, you can. You're not waiting for your other players to kind of get together so that you can actually play. So there are quite a few uh, kind of advantages there. Um, you don't have to worry about anyone being poached or anything like that as well when it comes to pugging. You can just kind of pick up and play. But getting into some of the disadvantages, because this is the main thing with pugging, is that there are a lot of disadvantages. And... I would say the, the biggest uh, disadvantage for pugging is the time investment, right? Whereas when you're playing with a pre-made, you can at least all log on at a set time and you can just immediately get into keys and you just go for it. Whereas with pugging, you sometimes spend, I mean, I have people tell me they spend two, three, four, sometimes like six hours just waiting to find a key. And I've definitely been in that situation, especially in BFA, where I was waiting, yeah, sometimes six hours. Sometimes I would start a stream trying to find a key, I'd get four hours in, we still hadn't entered a dungeon yet, because I'm just trying to get into stuff, right? 
And so you definitely have to commit a lot more time to just trying to get into groups and find people willing to give you a shot, which can be really tedious. Now, it, sometimes it can be just because there, there's so much competition, right? It might not even be, you know, some people can say, oh, we'll play a better spec. But sometimes you can be a really good spec, you can be a meta spec, and you can still struggle to get into groups just because of the sheer amount of competition, right? There are a lot of people trying to play. There are a lot of DPSs, right? There aren't that many tanks. There aren't that many healers. So I think it's very difficult to find, uh, you know, to, 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 to be able to kind of jump, just jump into a group when you're pugging. Another massive thing when it comes to pugging is the fact that you only have one shot, right? When you go in with a pre-made group, you guys can practice, you know, maybe you get a good week, maybe you get a uh, the other side and you go, oh, nice, we really want to, we really want to smash the other side. We've been looking forward to a good week for the other side and, we, and we're going to go in and we're just going to try and push, push some the other sides this week, right? You have a good chance that if you get a the other side, if you, if you get a couple of the other sides throughout the week, you can practice it a few times that week if you're lucky with key drops, right? And so you have a few shots to try a, a route. Oh, it didn't work because we had to do this differently or we tried to pull a pack and went too big and maybe we need to split that into two packs and then change things later on. You can do that and you can make those changes. The massive thing with a pug is you only have one shot. You only have one chance to try and time that key. And it's actually insane if you think about people that exclusively pug their keys, if they're trying to get IO, because you reach a point, so say the point that I'm at now, right? Where I've got 20s and 21s for every single key slot. So the only thing I need now are like tw some 21 keys, like a couple of 21 keys, and then everything else I needed a 22 or higher. And not many people pug 22 keys. And if they are pugging 22 keys, not many are interested in bringing a feral or a survival hunter. So I've reached a point where it's actually really hard to get into groups. So what I need to do now to gain IO is do say a plus 19 or a plus 20 of a key that I don't even need the score for to then hope that the group is good enough to time that key to then hope that 19 or 20 key rolls into a 21 key of a key that I actually need IO on and that the group is willing to stay together for it and then we're willing to go and do that key and then we have to time that key as well just for me to gain 20 IO, 30 IO, right? So you actually, and, and this is not like a one-time thing. This is something that consistently happened and something that I've been doing since BFA. I haven't done it that much now in Shadowlands because I cannot be bothered because of the how time-consuming it actually is. But it's a massive, massive uh, kind of complex when it comes to hugging keys is having to go backwards, do some keys, hope they time it, hope they stay together, hope they get a good key, hope they then time that key, and so on and so forth. And it's very unlikely that all of those things go well and go in your favor. Sometimes it happens, and when it does, that's fantastic, but it's, it's really rough when it comes to pugging. And that, I, I would say, is like the biggest issue of pugging, is eventually you hit a wall, a radar IO wall of trying to, of trying to push. Now, pugging keys doesn't just entail pushing the high end level. This can also be doing plus sixes, plus tens, plus fifteens. We've all gone on, you know, Reddit and we've all seen these horror stories of people, you know, showing DMs that they've received off players and, you know, people telling each other to like kill themselves and shit because they like missed an interrupt and whatever and like there's all this just all like telling people that they're boosted and this and that and just the toxic 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 level of communication in the game people leaving keys three seconds into them because somebody didn't pull the right mob and like just crazy levels of of uh, just toxicity some people get to the end of a key that you're gonna time and then they leave on purpose just to mess with you. I've heard that happens as well, which is crazy. And I think the big thing when it comes to pugging, no matter what level you're doing, is that people are scared. And people, it's just fear. They're just afraid, right? They're just afraid. And the way I see it is that pugging keys is like five people trapped on a desert island everyone's on edge 
everyone's ready to snap at the slightest thing. And then also your best friend is a volleyball. And I think that really describes pugging Mythic Plus. Is it's just a lot of people on edge, a lot of people just frantic to time this key because they need their KSM or they need to prove themselves. They need that Raider IO. They want to play with the Dr. J's and the JB's and the like whoever else, right? And they desperately need to time this key so that hopefully maybe they can get into, you know, get to a point where eventually they can play with people like the uh, like this. And yeah, I just think a lot of people are afraid. And that's what causes people to be toxic. It becomes, it just, be, as soon as something goes wrong in a key with pugs, is it just becomes this like, wasn't me, wasn't me. That was not my fault. Without even stopping for a second and being like, hey, what went wrong? What happened? Let's all get on the same page here. What happened? What went wrong? Did we miss a kick? Did somebody stand in a frontal? Did a healer mess up a cooldown? Did a tank face things wrong? Like, what happened? Let's discuss it. Was it, you know, what, what, what was it that actually went wrong? And I think people aren't, aren't often willing to do that. People are normally just wanting to clear themselves, absolve themselves of the blame, and just be like, it was not me. Just so then they can be like, oh my God, at least it wasn't my fault. And I think that genuinely is what people are like. Of course, there are people who just are angry little children and they want to just be toxic and they want to just shit on people. And maybe it wasn't their fault. And it was, you know, and they and everybody knows that it wasn't that one guy's fault, but he's just being a dick for no reason. That guy's just a dick, all right? And just don't play with that guy again. If you ever see him, put him on your ignore list or whatever. But for the most part, I think people are just afraid. And... I think a lot of people, it would benefit people if instead of just immediately trying to blame, and even when I play in pre-mades or I'm on Discord or whatever, and I'm, and I'm playing with people and we're coordinating through the run and something goes wrong, somebody, somebody will miss an interrupt, right? I remember in Shrine of the Storms, I remember a specific Shrine of the Storms in BFA where second boss, somebody missed their kick, right? And instead of just saying, all right, no problem, Sai, take this kick or whatever or just just fixing it just moving on and just killing it because nobody died we just missed one kick which you can do that's fine and we could have just handled it and recovered it but instead it became a case of you missed your kick what no it wasn't my kick yeah that was your kick no i'm pretty sure it wasn't my kick i'm the second kick that wasn't my and then three more kicks go through and we wipe and it's like, okay, well, instead of just recovering this and just going, okay, no problem, go on. Okay, we need to panic pop a defensive. Okay, you know, and then just kind of pick up where we were and let's get these interrupts rolling and let's just finish this boss off. It became a, no, it wasn't me, it was you. No, it wasn't me, it was you. And we wipe and the key's over. So the biggest lesson I would tell you if you're, if you're in keys is just wait until the end of the key to, to discuss it, right? And what I always say, and what I remember saying at that moment is just, yo, just shelve it. Finish the key. We'll just, I just discuss it after. And that's all I say. And that happens, and it happens in pre-mate, it happens in whatever, it happens all the time where people just want to discuss what happened. It's like, forget what happened just now. We'll talk about it later. Let's get through this key. And I think a lot of people could benefit from developing that attitude and that mentality of just recovering the mistake. But yeah, I think, I think a big thing is just people being afraid. And I get it. Like, I think Mythic Plus is super punishing. I think it's really tough where, like, you just, if you deplete your key, you're now losing potential IO. You're now dropping down. You've got to rebuild this key. You've wasted your time. And I get, and sometimes it can take a couple hours to form a key together. So I get it. But I think people are just really on edge and people want to pass blame. And I think that people could benefit more from when a mistake does happen. Let's say a mistake happens and the key's depleted. You, you miss the timer, boom, done. And so you don't wait until the end of the, of the key to discuss it. You're going to discuss it now. I think people are just immediately wanting to just blame people, right? You may have seen that clip of me where I was in a theater of pain. And uh, we went into the to the first pool. We did the first boss. We chained in a bunch of trash and killed 
killed it on the boss, right? And I burst up like 40k DPS, right? And the mage burst up 40k, and the monk did like 20k, right? Windwalker monk did like 20k. And I, I was playing my survival hunter, I don't know if I mentioned that. And um, we clear off the trash. We're on the three bosses, you know, on the, on, the, on, the, on the boss of three, the trio. And the tank runs out of defensive cooldowns. His meta drops off. His demon spike drops off. There's no, no healing going out on him. Um, like, you know, no, no external defensive, whatever. And, uh, and he dies. And instead of, like, looking at it and being like, okay, what, like, what happened? Did we overcommit cooldowns? on the trash could we have done something differently instead of discussing that were we all prioring the correct target or were we like you know adding too much dps on stuff that was inconsequential where was the comb who who did you combust did i hit my soothes quick enough no i didn't i actually didn't i could have uh could have hit the rage bloodthorn or whatever with my soothe one tick quicker so i there is something i could have improved on right instead of discussing those things we all res and release and the key's over. People don't want to continue. And people just say, oh, I didn't realize you were a survival hunter. As if that was the issue, right? And it absolutely was not the issue. We wiped because we had a tank death, because we overcommitted defensives. And because we, I don't know, could have prior target damage uh, slightly better, right? But we probably didn't need to. It was probably a, a low enough key that we were fine, right? We just wiped because the tank died. and. Uh, and it's things like that where people just, they don't know what went wrong, but they know that something looks weird on the DPS meter, right? Like they can't identify, oh, maybe the tank overcommitted cooldowns. Maybe we didn't soothe quick enough. Maybe we could have done this. Maybe we could have done that. Maybe we, the Windwalker could have done a, ta uh, you know, a taunt swap and sh some shit. Maybe we missed some interrupts and the tank's getting nailed by, by these spell casts and we could have interrupted more, right? Instead of like identifying these things, because it's hard to track all those things just like, in the moment, you have to actually break it down and discuss it. Instead of doing that, people want to just be like, oh, a, that class looks weird. That spec is not what I expected. That's not a meta spec. Yes, that's that. And then they just like, that's the, that's the whole thing over, right? And I think a lot of people are just, because they don't know what went wrong, they just assume it's the most obvious thing in your face thing and just they just go with that right and i think that's a massive issue with mythic plus that people don't consider and especially with pugs because they're way less likely to be coordinated and be on discord and discuss those things whereas in a pre-made you discuss those what went wrong what could have been improved what you could have done differently did somebody need to save something here and uh and instead of having those conversations like you would in a pre-made in pugs people just go eh. Must have been that class or that spec or must have been this one thing when it could have been something completely different. Sometimes you can wipe in a pack and the issue for why you wiped occurred five minutes earlier when you committed some like cooldown or, or did something a few minutes earlier. You committed a battle res on something where somebody stood in a frontal, died. You commit the battle res on this trash pack and then you go into the boss and somebody dies to something unavoidable and you don't have a battle res available and now you've got a wipe was it that person's fault for dying on the boss no it was the battle res that you committed five minutes ago on a trash pack where somebody made a goofy mistake and people don't want to analyze these things they just want to pass blame because they're so afraid that somebody's going to come at them and it becomes a case of absolve yourself the quickest and then no one's going to come and attack you and say that you're boosted and a bad player and that you should kys right and uh yeah i don't know i think those are kind of just my thoughts on pugging pre-made the kind of the experiences that i've found that i've had uh i definitely would say if you can get into a pre-made group you should do it you should try it even if it's a guild group of friends i know i personally have had a really enjoyable time lately just playing right me and uh me, me and this guy enemas we've just been playing me and him he's a tank i'm a dps we've just been kind of two manning groups and pugging the rest and we're just going in what happens happens we're, we're down just to have a good time hoping to push some io and hopefully forming a pre-made from that right from the two of us and yesterday i played like i say i played with i was playing with fam dan uh, uh jb and shella 
and we were just doing some keys we were goofing off and we didn't care too much about our comp and we were going into these keys and we depleted the other side like four times in a row it was a mess we missed a shit ton of kicks but we had it was probably some of the best keys i've ever done in my life they were hilarious they were a really good time everyone was laughing joking we were poking fun at each other and it was just a really good time and we depleted the shit out of some of these keys we didn't care because we were just having a good time with it and i think we need to kind of bring some more fun into mythic plus and people just to, to, to relax a bit just have a good time but those are my thoughts let me know what your experiences have been in the comment section below this again was just kind of a video me just kind of ranting and and, and talking and discussing some experiences and stuff about pre-mating over pugging and uh, yeah hopefully it was an enjoyable little watch and uh, i'll see you in the next one thanks for thanks for watching take care